The Brotherhood of Steel are a massive power in the wasteland. As most of you will know, the organization is spread across the continent, from west to east. The West Coast Brotherhood of Steel, which we encountered in Fallout New Vegas, seems more traditional in their views. They haven't deviated much from the Brotherhood's original vision, and they treat outsiders with great suspicion. In stark contrast, the East Coast Brotherhood of Steel has deviated greatly from tradition. They interact with other inhabitants of the wasteland regularly and even induct them into their ranks. My question is this, is the East Coast chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel right in their decision to abandon some of the Brotherhood's oldest traditions? Back in 2254, the Brotherhood's ruling council, based in the Lost Hills bunker in southern regions of California, decided to send a contingent to the East Coast with one primary objective recover any and all advanced technology from East Coast cities and pre-war military bases. The Brotherhood's greed for cool loot from the pre-war era was only one part of it though. They also eyed up the East Coast for another reason. Washington DC, the old capital of pre-war America. The Brotherhood of Steel saw themselves as a true claimant to the wasteland, as the new government in a way. So they believed liberating the capital wasteland would be of great use to their cause. Owen Lyons, who was a head paladin for this contingent, led a group of fellow brothers towards the east coast in order to complete this objective. During the journey, they passed through an area which was originally Pittsburgh. The Brotherhood obliterated any possible enemy who dare stood in their way. As they made their way through the city, they had essentially cleansed it of all thugs. But it was here. Lions and the gang looked past the Brotherhood's tradition for the first notable time. The Brotherhood's recruitment process is pretty thorough. Like, so thorough, if you're recruited, you should feel extremely special. You could probably count on one hand how many times they've actually recruited outsiders to their cause. Most of the Brotherhood is built upon their predecessors. They only really allow their offspring to become members. Through the rubble of a once great city, they found a group of survivors, children, and presumably orphans. So just to make sure you're on the same page as me here, these kids have not been born into the Brotherhood, okay? But lions let them in with open arms. They were mostly all trained up just like any other Brotherhood squire or initiate too. This is a blatant disregard of the Brotherhood's tradition, but I'm gonna come back to this. A little while after Pittsburgh, lions finally arrived with his posse in the capital wasteland of Washington DC. They established their objectives swiftly and hunkered down in the old Pentagon building. To start with, they were fairly successful with their goal to harvest technology, but when it came to the roadblock that was the super mutant infestation in the DC ruins, they started to sway in a different direction. With the war against the super mutants raging on, the Brotherhood East Coast chapter made the decision to put helping the people of the capital wasteland on their to-do list, alongside gathering technology. That's strike number two for the East Coast Brotherhood, in case you've lost count. This obviously hurt the butts of the hardcore Brotherhood members, who broke off to continue with just the original objective of their mission. These were the outcasts, as most of you will know. The East Coast Brotherhood chapter later along the line began aiding a scientific project that Fallout 3 players will know of only too well as Project Purity. This is very unconventional for the Brotherhood, because, let's face it, the Brotherhood are traditionally self-serving assholes. Like, they're in it for themselves, and only care about others if they can help the Brotherhood's cause, and will most likely leave them for dead at the drop of a hat. So the fact that Elder Lions and his chapter are actually helping people to an extent is almost unheard of. Ugh, and the Brotherhood policy, the chains that bind, don't even get me started on this. Well, if you venture into Fallout New Vegas' Brotherhood chapter of the Mojave, you can locate information on the chains that bind. The policy reads, Orders are to flow from high down through the ranks. An order from a superior must always be obeyed, that their wisdom may be carried out without hesitation. Orders are to observe the flow and not skip ranks. Remember that part. A superior may only give orders to his direct subordinates, and not to those beneath them. In this way, harmony of intent and cohesion of thought is maintained. Sure. The art direction was slightly different between games, as Obsidian Entertainment developed Fallout New Vegas, and they obviously cannot be completely consistent with absolutely everything lore-wise. However, this is a big part for one of the biggest and most renowned factions in the Fallout franchise. It is their whole philosophy as it was put in Fallout New Vegas. 
An example of the policy being put to good use in the lore is when Elder Kenneth Jones disobeys the concept and is forced to step down as the chapter's elder. He was then replaced by head paladin of the chapter, Paladin Linquist. The supposed cornerstone of the Brotherhood of Steel is pretty much forgotten on the East Coast during Fallout 3 and 4. Basically, this policy requires all members of the Brotherhood to obey a superior's order, completing the order to the best of that rank's ability. But this cuts both ways. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, a member of the Brotherhood, who is not directly above the another member's rank, is not allowed to directly command them. It is shown on numerous occasions during Fallout 4 where Elder Maxon gives you, the player, orders and receives no disciplinary action in any form, never mind the standard loss of his rank. Back to the man of the hour, Owen Lyons. He started this trend. In the main quest line of Fallout 3, he tasks you with the quest Picking Up the Trail, where he asks you to retrieve the Garden of Eden creation kit from Vault 87. Following this, he does not stand down from his position as Elder or is challenged in any way, so either nobody actually noticed he was unbinding these chains, or the East Coast just don't care about the policy anymore. These are a few ways the East Coast have sorta of disregarded the tradition of the Brotherhood, but let's return to my original query. Were they right in doing this? Well, yeah. I believe so at least. The format the Brotherhood have with the expansion of their faction is pretty limited as is. Sure, the Wasteland has some nutters, that you probably don't want to be in your elite team of technology tanks, but keeping it to a few select members of the outside world and your own offspring is probably not the best idea. I mean, the Enclave are inbred as fuck, and you don't want to become like them, do you? Allowing some poor folk in who have an interest in the safety of others would give them an opportunity to truly make the Wasteland a better place. It could be treated as one of those programs to get rough kids off the streets and making good use of their potential and talents for something other than becoming a drug mule for some raiders. There will be an abundance of people who would want to join the Brotherhood, not just to be able to help others if possible, but also for the safety and security of having brothers to trust. Oh, and the whole Project Purity thing? Well, giving a whole fucking wasteland clean drinkable water is a pretty goddamn good thing. If you ask me at least. Sure, I reckon controlling that could come in handy when trying to instigate some new government, but would also raise some eyebrows at the same time. This is essentially the first step into undoing the wrongs done to the capital wasteland, and I think Lions would be pretty proud to have helped the team on Project Purity make this happen. And the whole super mutant war thing? It definitely benefited the Brotherhood. Clearing out some areas of the mutated creatures would make it easier to locate tech for their original objective, along with making it a much safer place for less trained civilians when they're looking for some breakfast. Sure, they lost some men in the process, but as they say, it only gets worse before it gets better. Overall, they have given the Brotherhood a good name, in the eyes of a lot of the East Coast at least. Maybe it'll redeem some of the bad traits from the chapters back in the West. We see in Fallout New Vegas the Mojave chapter following their brothers in California as well as they can, but they are struggling. They're struggling to make ends meet, and they're isolated from the outside world. They're getting their asses handed to them on a plate alongside a three course meal by the NCR, which they'll actually need cause they'll be getting pretty hungry after rationing for so long. Whereas the boys over on the east side are kicking ass, coming into Boston with a fucking airship like they're the cool kids of town. They ain't taking shit from nobody. They've got the tech, they've got the resources, and they've got a decent amount of success. Deviating from some traditions seems to have worked well for them. Lastly, the chains that bind. It's, it's pretty stupid to be honest. I understand its overall reasoning, but some of the policy just doesn't make any logical sense. For example, an elder says to an initiate, Yo, go get me some coffee and a sweet roll, son. The initiate would simply have to answer, no can do. You are disobeying the chains that bind. The order would literally have to be passed down the chain of command, which is just ridiculous. If the man wants a coffee, let him order any lower member to get him a damn coffee. Uh, but what do I know? I'm just a lonely fool on the internet who doesn't understand the meaning of tradition and how it overrules the goodness that could be in the world. <sighs> Thank you guys for watching my video, if you want to watch more of our videos make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you've not done so already. You can check out another series that I'm doing with the ShoddyCast, it's Hidden History, or you can check out something that Austin, another member of ShoddyCast, has been doing. 
And uh, if you want to do more than liking and subscribing to help us out, you can head over to Patreon and support us on there. And also, a follow on our Twitter would uh, come in handy. Maybe you can even follow me. I post stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I'll see you guys on another video. And I do hope you guys enjoyed this one.